This is Akira, and this is Akira's roadmap to success. I'm not petting Akira right now because uh, this is the first time she's been on my lap, and as soon as I put her up here, she started shuddering and shaking a little bit. Anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're amplifying and reinforcing, and this includes unbalanced states of mind. This is probably the most common mistake people make with their dogs. The dog's nervous, they're like, it's okay, Akira, Akira good girl. Now, I mentioned this to the Guardian off camera. Um, a lot of us will say, it's okay, good girl. It's okay, good girl. It's okay, good girl. Hey, sweetheart, it is okay. But if we say that always when the dog is nervous, we're building an association. Dogs live through association, repetition, and good timing. You have three seconds to correct or reward your dog for them to have to make, uh, make the association. So if every time somebody comes over and I get nervous as a dog and I hear the word expression, it's okay, good girl, especially in a sing-song sort of voice, after a while, the dog starts to associate. That means danger is around. So uh, be monitored, be careful about that. The guardian I found was doing that a little bit at the beginning. So try to just, you know, you can touch and let the dog know I'm here with you without amplifying it if the dog is in distress. Uh, but if we pick it up or we pet it, we're reinforcing. Okay, so um, in this video, I want to talk about, uh, you know, try to summarize the things we went over in the session. Um, I think the guardian, uh, the guardian here really does a really great job. She works with dogs, so she knows a lot of the tricks and things not to do. Uh, but there were some things that she was doing, like I said, I think inadvertently petting the dog at times uh, to cause, uh, to help her comfort her, but really it was amplifying things. Now, we also have dogs that uh, get overexcited, and a lot of us confuse excited for happy. But overexcited is an unbalanced state of mind, just like being sad or fearful or nervous or stressed. Now, there's a video on my website, um, and message me if I don't include it in the write-up for you, and I'll add it to your write-up. But basically, we use a technique to stop dogs from jumping up by basically standing on the leash before the person comes in. We only do this when people are coming in that the dog is excited and wants to jump up on. So um, I'll share that video. I'm not going to go through it in here, but uh, message me. And the cool thing is it's, it teaches the dog to offer a new behavior on its own without tell us telling them not to jump or do anything. We just wait for them to figure it out on their own and then they get rewarded. And that's really some, uh, kind of something I went over with the guardian. That's really what I do when I have a dog with a behavior problem. First thing I do is I ask my client, have you taught the dog how you want it to behave? If you haven't, then you can't get mad at the dog for being upset. I'm not saying this client did because she doesn't. But a lot of people get very frustrated and angry with their dog for misbehaving, but they haven't taught them the proper behavior. That's on our fault, on our tab, not on the dog's tab. Can we get a sit? Sit. Remember, anytime you're using a treat, the treat should go in the mouth first, and then they should hear the command word immediately after, within that three-second window. Um, okay, so uh, some of the things we went over, we went over some rules. The Guardian already had some rules in place, but we fine-tuned them a little bit. Make sure that the Guardian's eating something before she feeds the dogs. If possible, if there's not another dog here, we don't have to worry about resource guarding. I'd like to have, prefer to leave the bowl on the floor, uh, preferably next to her water bowl, so she walks by it and notices it's empty. Now, she's a fast eater. She eats in about a minute, and she's used uh, uh, the slow feeder uh, really just to, but it, it's, it really hasn't slowed her down. So one of the things I found, and this is a really good sign, the, guard, the guest is right here still. We're not gonna show the guest. We don't show anybody's faces except for mine here on Dog Dog. But uh, she is comfortable enough to lay and only side saddle. Now we spend a lot of time working on this, but this is, this is the fruits of our labor. So when you get achieve this sort of thing, do give yourself a little celebration. Pat yourself on the back, get yourself an extra slice of cake or whatever it is. It's important we reward ourselves when our dogs make accomplishments as, much, as well as rewarding the dogs. And our tendency is to, make a big deal and go over and rush over and pet the dog and now we're going to spook the dog and move the dog away. Celebrate the moment. Let her practice. A lot of more than anything else is I want her to practice being around guests. Now, um, a summation of what I do in general when I have dogs uh, with behavior problems is I try to uh, break down the activity into small individual steps as well as remove all the extra elements. If the dog is freaked out when you have a party with a whole house full of people, I might actually help the dog practice just people coming in the door first without even coming in. And then eventually I practice with one person. Then I practice with one person with hors d'oeuvre plates that are low at the dog's nose to teach them not to go into it. And, and again, we're gonna break it down in, how can I break it down in small steps and help the dog practice the first step? Oh, chin down, even better. Um, so we practice the first step over and over until the dog knows how to do that first step easily. Only then do we go to the next step. And then once we've done all the individual steps and dogs practice them one at a time till it's confident before we move to the next one, then we string them all together in the easiest capacity possible. Then we gradually start adding back the real world elements. First we teach the dog how to behave, then we gradually make the simulation more and more closer to reality. And then when reality comes, the dog already knows how to behave because we've taught them how to do so. Now, uh, I fine-tuned a couple of the rules and I added a couple more, like uh, asking the dog to sit before uh, we let, it in or out, uh, let her in or out of the door. 
Um, and uh, let me see, not being allowed to uh, be near the human when they're eating, if she, even if she's not groveling or asking for it, it's inappropriate. Not being allowed in the kitchen when the guardian is cooking food. And for her, because she's a nervous dog, practicing being a couple of feet away from my guardian while I can still see her but not being next to her will help with her confidence as well. Um, I like the guardian to teach her how to stay using the three D's, first for duration, then for distance, then for distraction. If you forget how to do it, message me and I can send you a link to uh, one of the videos where I teach you how to stay. I want the dog to stay with, right in front of me like at this distance until the dog can stay here for five minutes. Only then do I start moving for dis, uh, distance. And at first it's just distance and distance with me out of the room. If you can get her to stay while you go use the bathroom or go change clothes or whatever it is, now she's practicing being alone and being comfortable without having to be clinging on next to somebody else. Now we also went over a lot of positive dog training because that's what I do. Um, and so we went over uh, petting with a purpose. Um, so that's if the dog nudges or demands attention. Instead of giving the attention, we ask the dog to sit, lay down, come, do something like that. And as soon as the dog complies, we pet under the chin and say just the command word. One of the things I want the guardian to work on is not using the expression good girl or good dog or go this or do that. We want to say just the command word. Um, and also be careful how we say it. Dogs hear inflection. There's a difference between sit and sit. And I don't know if you see her in the, in the shop, but her ears moved when I said that. So they, those sound like different commands. Also, try to consolidate your words. Come up with a list of all the command words. Use fun command words whenever possible. But all command words should be one word commands, preferably short. And uh, if we say, come, come here, over here, here, girl, tap my thigh, and a whole bunch of different versions of come, it's harder for her to perform. But if we just say come exclusively, it's easier for her to do that. Now, we have friends, uh, the guardian lives by herself, but if we have friends that come and visit the guardian's friends can help us if the guardian sees that I'm petting her without her sitting down, uh, the guardian says paycheck. And I stop petting, I ask the dog to sit. When it sits, I pet her on the chin, and I say the word sit, and I tell the person, I asked her to sit, you just didn't see it. Uh, now, after a while, the dog will start sitting in front of the humans to prepay for attention. When the dog does this, we want to make sure we do recognize and reward that within that three-second window, and I recommend the watchword of testify. Testify means you just missed an opportunity to reward your dog. So if somebody says testify to me, I look at the dog, and I pet the dog, and I do say whatever the dog is doing in that second. If it's standing there, I'm assuming it just came. If I ask what I'm, what I'm petting for, I'm going to miss that three-second window. So we can help each other and you know one of the questions I asked the guardian off camera is what could the dog do to make you happy and she kind of struggled with that answer a little bit um, but I want my dog to do things to be obedient to do the things I asked them to do. Now like I said she'll start offering that per behavior ahead of time to prepay for attention and even if you want to pet the dog still ask the dog to do something. She's already sitting ask her to come and sit over here or ask her to lay down. Now I also practice what I call passive training which is rewarding the dog for desired actions and behaviors. And this way, when we ask the dog, what can you do to make your guardians happy? Well, she likes it when I come, she likes it when I sit, she likes it when I lay down, she likes it when I poop, or whatever it is. So remember, we have context and the timing helps. So if she sits, I'm gonna pet her under her chin and say the word sit. Every time she comes to me, I'm gonna pet her and say come. And now, when I say come, when, later on, if you do that, get in the habit of doing that, after about a month, you say come, she will come running, because that means fun. A lot of times we say come when we're leaving the dog park or going into the, into the home from the backyard or whatever it is, it represents the end of fun. This is really good. She's turned away from the guest and put as her chin on the ground and she's side saddle. Uh, for her to get up and move away would be difficult, it would require a lot of movements. So again, these are uh, little things that we wanna celebrate. Now, um, the, the uh, video that I went over above, I think it's really gonna be helpful for uh, guests when they come over, to going for that walk before they actually come into the house. But we want to really, uh, with behavior, we can get, sometimes uh, carry momentum. So the, uh, the guest has walked her probably twice, but that was different. And so it was with other dogs as well. So now if all these guests come over, guest comes over represents I get to go for a walk. I meet the guests outside so I feel more relaxed. And then we go on a walk together. And we basically, we just got done going for a walk. We went for like a two block walk. When we got around the block, the guardian walked home and the guest and I walked her the rest of the way. And she looked over her shoulder at the, uh, the guardian's direction about three times after that, just followed us along the way. She peed a little bit on the way, which is another good sign. Remember, grooming and that sort of stuff is stuff the dog won't do if it's in a petrified state of mind. Also won't take a treat or won't sit down if they're fearful. Um, so I really think uh, a lot of this is going to be not reinforcing another, yes, I, I'm enjoying it. Um, but uh, little things like making sure the guardian eats first. The guardian has a kind of a different schedule and she doesn't want to make the dogs wait, so she was you know, just feeding them in front of her. 
but dogs eat, it, eating is a very important activity. So if she just eats a chip or a cracker and then lets her eat next because it's her house, she should always probably eat before any of the dogs because sometimes dogs stay here. Then when she's done eating, she leaves the room and the next dog comes in. Now, if that creates a problem, you could put her in a different room or a kennel if you need to, but I prefer not to do that if we can and everyone stays safe so she's developing more self-restraint and self-control. Um, let me see, what else? Um, uh, sounds. I'd like the guardian to make a list of all the sounds that she reacts to. I mean, just closing the iPad causes her to freak. So I show the guardian a counter conditioning exercise. Remember for counter conditioning, we wanna make sure that the dog feels comfortable. So we're either gonna increase the distance, slow down the speed, or lower the volume. So closing the iPad, I had the guardian just opening, instead of open all the way and slamming, that's too loud of a noise, we just did a little one. And she was actually guiding it down so it wasn't free falling. But eventually, when you do it enough, and the dog is chewing on the treat. Oh, remember for counter conditioning, that your dog always needs to be chewing on the treat first. And when the treat is about to go away, the stimulus has to stop. So sometimes we need an extra person around to help with trigger those things. But if we systematically practice at the lowest level possible so the dog no longer reacts and only then go to the next level of volume or rate of speed or closer in distance, eventually we can do it at full speed and the dog will no longer be reactive to that. And I think a lot of her reactivity is due to her having cortisol in her blood because that's a stress hormone because she's on point at all times. The more the guardian enforces rules consistently, as well as pets with a purpose and passive training and all the rest of those things, she's going to feel more confident. Also, saying instead of saying good dog, saying whatever it is, is going to help her uh, learn those skill sets a little bit better. Now, when I'm teaching a dog to command, first I teach them with a gesture, which I'm, is how pretty much all dogs learn. Then I teach them a verbal command. So I might say sit. When the dog sits, then I give it a treat and say the word sit. After a while, when the dog actually has it, I want to test. If the dog's here looking at me, I might turn my head out of the way and say, sit, with the dog not looking at me. If the dog can do it without looking at your face, now they are truly doing the auditory cue. But dogs can read a human facial expression and they can read human's lips if we're saying the same command word over and over again. So uh, for that reason, I like coming up with fun command words. Instead of telling my dog to lay down like this, I tell my dog to crash. Um, come up with the words that are, have resonance for you. You could say kennel. But if you've never been to Hawaii, maybe you call it Hawaii or Cabo or something like that. Or if you like going to, you know, whatever it is, you say something that's kind of a, will resonate with you and your guest. If you can come up with fun command words that your guests chuckle about, that's going to remove a lot of the tension out of the room. And dogs are very perceptive of that. And now the dog feels like, man, every time someone comes over, you know, it's, it's fun time. Everything I do, it makes the guest smile. So I feel more comfortable and relaxed about it. Now remember when your guests come over, they need to ignore the dog completely. No touching, no looking at, no trying to, t to touch or offer anything. If we're doing treats like I described in the video, somebody else is gonna be offering those because the smell of the guest might probably throw the person, uh, the dog off. But the idea is eventually get her closer and closer. We didn't achieve taking the treats off of the, the feet, but I'm guessing if the guardian practices within a week or so, she can get the dog going over taking those treats off of the, uh, off of the guest foot. Now again, let her move away. And don't, uh, if she needs a little bit of a break, that's awesome. We want her to feel empowered. Um, let me think, what else? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, did I come, uh, is there anything else you can think of that I didn't go over that we want me to go over here? Mm -hmm. uh, games for exercise. Oh, uh, so games for exercise, fetch is a great one. Um, she did seem to be interested in chasing a laser and the guardian was a little bit worried about using a laser because she's read online that you shouldn't do that. Uh, it creates frustration. Some dogs say I can't actually catch it and it can, but she didn't seem, I don't do it with dogs that are like Ugh, crazy for it, but she was interested in while well, we had a guest here. Now, if she chases it without being too manic, then we can use that. Just remember to make sure you never let her look at the pen and see the dot coming out of it here because she'll think it jumped off the floor here. Also, every once in a while, just click it on and off without the batteries in it so she hears the sound of it going on and off without the click. And then also this motion, if we only do this when the laser's out, then she'll look for it. So every once in a while, pick the thing up and just go like this when there's no laser. Now, we can also put her in a position to succeed. Before we have a guest come over, we can laser her or do other things. Uh, you, the guardian might want to Google scent games. Tr leaving treats and having the dog hunt for the treats, that's a great way to distract the dog as well. And burning off excess energy before a guest comes and then having the guest take me for a little bit of a walk, all those things are gonna help her feel a little bit more confident and comfortable. Um, teaching her new tricks and commands also can be a good way to boost a dog's self-esteem and confidence. Now we can use passive training, uh, just rewarding the dog every time it does the right thing, also with toys. So every time she brings me a toy, I might say, you know, 
purple or you know ball or you know come up with fun command words uh, so you know I, I had one that looked like DNA you hold it out and it, was, and it would squirrel up and you pull it out and it looked like a ladder so we just call it DNA so again fun command words uh, but the more commands that we can teach her typically the more uh, self-esteem she's gonna have just like us if we pass the bar or graduate high school or college or whatever it is we mark milestones in our life with celebrations because we accomplish something and it helps us feel better more confident and have more self-esteem that's a great way to attack her problem. We want to attack her problem in all sorts of angles. We don't want to just boost her self-esteem. We want to remove the cortisol in her blood. We want to increase her confidence. We want to change the environment. And when she does get locked into things, always try to take her for a little bit of a mini walk if she you know, locks up. Also, when other dogs come over, make sure you take them, they meet outside and go for a walk together. Remember the humans in the front, the dogs in the outside. Then I would lead them into the backyard and if your gut tells you they feel comfortable and confident, we can let them off, maybe let them off on leash, the dragging leash around so we can intercede if we need to. And then if once they feel comfortable, then we detach the leash and we you know, go to go step by step. Um, uh, directional commands. Um, I would like the guardian to grab two treats or one of my treats and cut it and tear them in half. And remember the treats that I have, we don't want to leave the bag open. We uh, close that bag and just burp the air out of it. But if I take two, these treats and I cut them in half and then basically if I want her to practice leaving every room. So I go to the kitchen, let's say this is door from the kitchen. I touch the dog's nose with the treat. I toss it three feet out of the kitchen. The dog goes out and gets it and licks it up. I say the word out. Then the dog will come back and do it a second time. Then I go to each bedroom, each doorway in the house and teach her that. So later on when we ask her to out, she understands what that means and she's been rewarded to do that so she's more than happy to do that. We can also do that with the yard, going outside and uh, you know, tossing a treat outside, tossing a treat inside, we say yard or house. Uh, when she goes in and gets them. Um, also, she likes to play, sometimes she plays and she gets a little bit too excitable playing with other some dogs out in the backyard. And I told the guardian she needs to break in, uh, work in bricks and she's like, I can't catch her, she's too fast. Well, we need to practice. Anytime your dog is need, you need your dog to perform something, you help to help them practice it in the easiest capacity possible when you don't need them to do it. Most people only try, only try to get their dog to behave, do the thing they want when they need it, and that's the worst time to learn anything. So when she's outside playing, every once in a while, just go out there, offer a treat, have her come to you, give her the treat, let her go do her thing. Um, and if she won't come back to you and the other dog, they're playing too rough, ask the other dog to come to you. And then when the dog comes, bring that dog inside uh, and have stay inside, wait for the dogs to settle down. And when she's settled, then go outside and maybe ask her to come to you, give her a treat. Don't put her the leash on the leash right away though. Let her come get the treat and let her go walk off. Do that three or four times, maybe the fourth time I grab the collar as I get the treat. Then we come inside. Then I'd have the guardian take them outside with a walk in the yard around the outside and you know, do different formations and whatnot. But keep on walking them until they're not pulling on a leash and they're kind of bored again. Then we detach leashes and let them go back to practicing. But practicing your dog going up and then slowing down and coming, going up and down is really important, just like it is for us when we're working out. It's good for them for behavior. All right, um, Akira. Kira. She's like, I'm full. I've had almost a full bag of treats and some snickerdoodles. Uh, but like I said, I'm very happy with her body language. Now the video above, uh, uh, maybe you might want to take a note of her body language and something else, she, uh, just her signals. Something else you might want to do is have another somebody over here that she's comfortable with and then have one of your guests come over and have the person just videotaping her. Try to stay about 10 feet away Try to keep this camera sideways and you can just, and if possible, try to, like the guest is here, try to film her so the dog's between her and the guest. That's not as important, but if you can see when she looks at the guest, her ears do this, or her tongue does this, or her hair does that. You can start looking for these things. Dog, I'm giving you an overview of dog's body language, but it's going to be different for each dog. So if we can customize it to her and the guardian is better at reading her, then we can get her out of trouble and redirect her or do whatever we need to do before, the, before she gets into trouble. All right, this is Akira, and this is Akira's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.